Everybody to Go Local Live, I'm Josh Fenton, CEO and co-founder. First things first, thank Dr. Michael Fine, former director of health, for joining us again today, talking about some of the ongoing problems uh, Rhode Island is having uh, at a macro level uh, with the vaccination program. But let's talk about an initiative that's having some success and rolling out today. Let's go with Michael Andrade. He's with CPNRI. Michael, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we're glad to have you. Let's talk about your organization and your role in it, kind of frame where we are today. Sure. So CPNRI is an organization made up of 23 local nonprofit organizations that are dedicated to supporting people with intellectual and development disabilities across Rhode Island. Um, we provide a range of different services supporting both children and adults um, in a range of settings, whether it be providing in-home services all the way to 24-hour 24 con 24 congregate care services and making sure that people have adequate supports and resources towards really living an enriched life and uh, connecting to their local communities. Michael, how hard has the pandemic been on the folks that you, you serve? It's extremely devastating. Um, and why that is, is because unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you see it, our system was built on a couple of pillars. One of them was around normalization and inclusion, um, connecting friendships and forging opportunities around employment, community integration, um, actually figuring out ways where people are out, not in, not confined to four walls, was really the foundation of our philosophy. So literally overnight, we had to talk with people about that what they've known for most of their adult life has pivoted into an extremely different direction and trying to explain this to individuals so that they understood it was very frustrating for them. It was very hard for them to um, understand that they couldn't do the things that they wanted to do. When our, all these years we were talking around self-advocacy and choice and making sure people could go out and suddenly overnight here we are saying, no, you need to stay home because it's just too dangerous. And that has continued throughout this pandemic. We've tried to engage people to provide additional protections. First was around securing PPE and making sure that staff had adequate um, tools towards keeping people safe, as well as the individuals we support. Then it was uh, working on cyclical testing and making sure that we had those resources to be able to you know, identify when someone was ill and being able to quickly respond. Sadly, we've had um, death both of individuals we serve and, and staff um, as a result of this virus. And it was just devastating to our entire community. Um, fortunately today, we now have the vaccine and we've been very engaged with DMAT and the Rhode Island Department of Health towards providing a variety of clinics. Um, I'm happy to report that just under 2,000 people have been vaccinated through this initiative. And again, we're very thankful to Crook Bay Country Club who has donated their space to allow that to happen. Um, and we've thus far uh, completed three different clinics towards uh, that goal. And we're, at, we're on, on par to be able to continue those clinics all the way through April to make sure that the bulk of our community gets the vaccine. How many in your, in your community need to be vaccinated? How many total do you serve between those 23 organizations? So collectively, we're just uh, just over 3,000 individuals supported and just about 3,000 staff. So if you put those two numbers together, that's over 6,000 people that we need to process and try to get vaccinated towards uh, ensuring their safety. And you got to give them both two doses. So you're about, you know, you're, you're, you're maybe whatever that is, 15 math off the top of my head, 17 percent of the way there. Uh, to be able to get both doses done. How difficult is it from a logistics standpoint to get folks over to Kirk Bray in this environment? So the community agencies have been amazing. Um, we've worked with them as little as 12 hours notice towards getting people registered and making sure that everyone had all the different requirements to make sure that it was a, a successful process. Um, as far as the organizations, they've assigned different people in terms of coordinating logistics, getting people in lift vans and making sure that people have adequate staffing and trying to make sure that people also understand what's happening. Part of what we want to make sure is that people are, are clear about what the process is and what it is the vaccine entails. We've had to reach out to guardians and making sure that people provide adequate consent. Um, logistics on site, we've 
coordinated both with DMAP has been wonderful in terms of coordinating the vaccine distribution. It's our job to work out the logistics to ensure that people get into the site safely and that we assist with observation post the vaccination. And then we follow up relative to any additional concerns relative to uh, symptomology or certainly also scheduling the second dose and making sure those, those logistics are occurring. So we've been at this thing. Uh, the first case of uh, coronavirus was detected in Rhode Island in March. There's certainly indication that there were cases before that, but we, we've been at it a year. Uh, nearly 2,300 people have died, more than 100,000 have been infected. How amazingly complex has this been for your organizations? And are you surprised how well you've done in managing it? You know, at the end of the day, failure is not an option for our community. You know, lives depend on us. And there have been some takeaways. And certainly uh, when we hear the, the passing of staff and individuals, that, that's heartbreaking. Um, and we've tried to provide support to different people relative to the, that loss. Um, what we've seen with the vaccine is we've been able to see each other again. Part of that is, you know, having some level of a normalcy to be able to, you know, say hello, um, albeit in a safe manner. Some people, it was the first time that they've left their home because they were so concerned in terms of contracting this virus. Staff have been wonderful around pivoting and, and working. You know, one of the first things we had to learn is literally overnight how to provide services in a very different way. Zoom and Skype and all of these as part of these teleservices are now part of kind of our, our core services. And what we've learned as a result of that is that many people do like this type of approach and it can work. Not all. Uh, I think for uh, maybe about 20% of the population, this approach works well. And this is now a new tool at our disposal towards trying to figure out how to meet unmet needs. Um, part of us kind of pivoting back and trying to think about uh, how to re-engage people, uh, it's, it's affording new opportunities. It's helping us think about this a little differently. Had the pandemic not occurred, we probably this probably would have been many years out before we looked at system transformation. Today, as a result of the pandemic, we're we're saying, you know what, we really need to think this different about this differently. We need to be able to engage with stakeholders and really identify ways that we can embrace new technologies and new approaches towards really fulfilling our mission and just furthering the the, the goal of uh, people being further included in this society. Um, Michael, you you get the last word. You know, you've got as many challenges as anybody running an organization in the state of Rhode Island. What's your lesson? What would you transfer to others? Uh, you can't give up hope. That at the end of the day, even on your dark days, you need to have hope. We need to be champions for change. And, you know, I think you need to continue to be flexible. Um, each day is a new day. And we look at, we identify new resources and new approaches. Um, as I mentioned in that stages, P first it was PPE, then it was testing, and today it's vaccine, and all three continue today. And it's a lot of work, but it's work that's necessary, and we will get through this. And you got to be, uh, we need to inspire others in terms of that, you know, that there is light at the end of the tunnel, and we need to support people to take full advantage of every tool we have towards making life better for people with disabilities. And at the end of the day, our community is wonderful. We have great partners. It, whether it be local and state partners and businesses, and we'll get through this. And I would just ask our community members out there to be open. If you have a job, you know, please think about people with disabilities because we want people to be back in their community. Um, it's going to take a bit to get there, but we're willing to roll up our sleeves and figuring it out. And we just ask everyone in the community to be open to having folks uh, reintegrate and continue to do wonderful things. Michael Andre, CPNRI, thank you so much. I know how busy you are. Really appreciate you taking the time for everybody else. Uh, stay tuned for more updates on Go Local. We've got things breaking this afternoon and into this evening. Uh, please, please wear a mask. Uh, save everybody, uh, your friends, your family, uh, the local business owner, and keep their employees working. Please, please wear a mask and stay safe. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.